Hey everyone, welcome to part 11 of this 12 part Python tutorial series for beginners. In this chapter, we're going to learn about classes in Python. This is the last major concept we will cover in the beginner series before we go on to start building projects with our knowledge. So what are classes in Python? One way to think about it is that it is a blueprint for objects that we want to create. It's also a way of organizing our code. It lets us group variables and functions that we've learned about from the previous chapters into a single logical unit. And that makes it so that these variables and functions are in one place and are more convenient to use together. Also, it's a form of abstraction. So if you recall, abstraction means turning something complex and ambiguous into something that's simple and useful to us. Let's take a quick look at an example. Suppose I'm building a food database for a supermarket and I want to have information about each food product that I want to sell. This is what a class would look like for that. So here you have a class named product and there's a function in there with two underscores and then init, which stands for initialize. And then you have these variables, name, calories, and price per kg. I'll explain all the stuff that's going on there in a bit, but first let's talk about what this can do for us. So this class is a blueprint for a food product. It's not referring to any particular product. It's just a way for us to specify what all products should have. Now let's hop over to our editor and type that out. So first to create a class, we start with the keyword class, and then we follow up with the name of our class. So here I'm going to call it product. And in Python, it's typical to begin class names with a capital letter. So this is different from the variable names where we learn to use snake case, which is a lowercase with underscores. Class name should be with a capital letter. And if you have two words, then you don't use an underscore. You just capitalize each new word. So this is called Pascal case. And so we put a colon here and we'll write our constructor function. A constructor function is the function that you call when you want to create a new copy of this class. And I'll explain what that means later. But for now, to create a constructor function, you do double underscore and double underscore are sort of reserved for special names or special functions in Python. So you can see that here, it's already suggesting me a bunch of uh, special inbuilt functions that I could use. But the one I care about is called init, which stands for initialize. And it's written a bit of code for me here, but we haven't covered this yet. So I'm just going to delete it. And this is a function that gets called when you want to make a product. Uh, so I'm going to want to make a product with a couple of things like the name, the price, and maybe the, the calories. So any attributes or variables we want this product to have, will have to pass in through this constructor function. And very roughly, I wanted to have a name. And since it's a food product, I wanted to have calories. And I also want to have the price per kilogram. And I'm doing this price per kilogram instead of price because I want to have products, fruits and vegetables that when people buy them, they buy a certain amount. So then we can work out how much it is for the amount of weight that they are buying. So now I have a function that accepts these variables, but to make them belong to the product, we have to use this self keyword here. And if you look at this self keyword, this is actually one of the first arguments of uh, the class function. So this is how the class can refer to itself. So now if I want a product to have a name, I can do self dot name, name. And this self dot name is a different name to this variable because this one is in prefix with self. Um, and just to show you my point, I can actually change this to any variable. So this will still do the same thing. This is basically only in the scope of this function, this X here. But when I assign it to self dot name, then this variable will exist for this entire product. Anyway, so let's go back to that. Um, and I'm going to do the same for calories and the price. So now my constructor function is finished. I have a class called product. And to construct a copy of this class, I will use this init function. The first argument is a reference to itself, which is that particular product when I created at that time. And when I have many different products, I'll have many different version of this self variable. And then I have a name, the calories and the price per kg, which I'm basically just reassigning so that it belongs to this copy of the class. So that's why I'm doing self.name equals name and so on. 
So this is a class and this is my blueprint. Remember I said that a class is a blueprint for an object. So how do I create a new object from this blueprint? I can do this. So let's say I want a product called a banana. So this is my variable name and I'm going to set it equal to product. So in capitals, because this is the name of the class. And I basically just call it like a function. So I just open up the parentheses here. And if you mouse over that in VS Code, you could actually see that it has understood our class definition. So it says how to use this class. We need to provide name, calories, and price. So we just provide those like arguments. So the name is going to be banana. The calories is going to be 105, um, I guess, per serving. And the price is going to be $1 per kilogram. So let's print out this banana and see what happens. And when I run the program, I actually create a product called banana. And this is the calories and the price. Um, and when I print it out, I just get this weird thing. Uh, it, it doesn't tell me anything about the banana, but it just says that I have this product object at this weird sort of number here. So this is actually the memory address where this is stored on our computer when we're running this, because this is a reference to the product. But what if I want to get the name or the calorie of this product? Well, there are ways to do that. So it shows up when you print it out, but I won't get to that yet. Um, for now, we can actually reference each of its self variables by just typing a dot and then typing um, the name of that variable. So here I can print the product's name. And then if I run that, I'll see that it's a banana. And if I print banana calories, I'll run that and I'll see that it's 105. And I'm actually, I'm going to change this string name to an emoji because again, I like visual learning. Uh, and also because these are both numbers and it can get confusing, which is the price and which is the calories, I'm going to use keyword arguments instead. And you can also do that for class constructors. So now this is a lot more readable to me um, and I can still print out this information. So here the class is the blueprint and the banana is a copy of that class. So it's a copy of that actual product. And when we create a concrete copy of an object from a class, we call that an instance. So I'm going to say here that the banana is an instance of a product. Um, and I can create another instance as well. And this time I'm going to call it a tomato. And let's create one more just for fun. So now we have three instances of this product class. One is a banana, one is a tomato, and one is a potato. And if I print out the name and the calories of each of these products, you're going to find that they're different. So here I can print out banana.name and then banana.calories. I'll copy that and do the same for the tomato. And then if I run that, you'll see that the banana one has 105 calories and the tomato has 22 calories. So this is how a class is useful. It kind of lets you organize your code um, and create copies of something. So you don't have to do all of this over and over again if you wanted to represent three different objects. So far, we've seen that each instance of a class can have its own set of variables, but it can also have its own functions. And when a function is part of a class, it's generally referred to as a method by convention. But a lot of the times when people say method or function, they usually mean the same thing. So let's go back to our editor and learn how to write one. To write a function or a method as part of a class, you basically just write a function as you would normally, but you write it inside the scope of the class. So let me show you what I mean by that. So here, I'm just going to write a function called do something. And it's really not going to do anything. I'm going to use this keyword pass, which basically just does nothing. Um, just kind of skips this part of the code. Uh, but this, this is a valid method for this class now. Now, if I make this function unindented so that it's outside the scope of the class, this is not going to work. I mean, this is still a valid function. It just doesn't belong to this class anymore. So let's put it back in and see how we can use it. And to use a method like this as part of a class, you also have to pass in self. Just like the constructor method, 
every class method that's part of an instance needs to have self as its first argument because that's how you refer to all of these things here. Um, if I want to use the name, I could do that here. So for example, I could print out something and I can print out this is, uh, and then whatever the name is. Okay. Make that a format string. I don't need this pass anymore. So now if I want to use this method, I can grab my instance of the class and I can just type the name of the method like that. So here I have my class method and here I have an instance of a class and I'm gonna use that method. So I'll run it and you see that this is a banana line is printed out because of this. And if I change this banana to a different instance of the class, so for example, a tomato and I run it, then the tomatoes version of the method will be executed. You can also pass in arguments to a method just like with any other function. So a common use case with products like this is that we want to find out its price based on a weight. Let's create a function called getPrice. And here I'm gonna accept an argument called weight. And the weight is gonna be in kgs. And we already have the price per kg, so we just have to multiply it. So here, all I'm gonna do is return the self price per kilogram and then times it by the weight that I get as my input. And here, if I want to find out the price of maybe, let's say two kilograms of tomato, I can run that and, well, here I actually have to print it as well because it returns it. And let me run that again. And here it's 4.2. So $4.2 for two kilograms of tomato based on this weight and this price. And similarly, I could do the same for the banana as well. So um, if I wanted to find out the price for half a kilo of bananas, I simply do that. And then this method will give me 0 0.5 because the price per kilogram of banana is one. And just another way of demonstrating this, if I put one kilogram for both of them and I get the price and I run this again, you'll see that I still get different results because even though my input is the same to this method, these methods are actually using different values for the price per kilogram because one of them is associated with the banana and the other one is associated with the tomato. So even with both of them having one kilogram as the input argument, I still get two different prices depending on which food product I'm getting the price for. Now it's possible to also have um, variables and functions that are not associated with any particular instance of the class, but with the entire class itself. And this is really useful if there's certain things that are true for every instance of the class and you don't want to duplicate that information. For example, for our food product, we want to show the energy um, for each product in both calories and kilojoules, which is a common unit. So we don't need to store the conversion logic and the numbers required to do that in each instance of the class. We can just store it once universally for all products. Um, and a useful number for this is actually uh, 4.184 because this is how we convert from calories to kilojoules. So I can create a variable right here at the top of this class and it's got to be inside the scope of the class but not inside any of the class methods. And the reason I spelled out this variable name in capital letters is because this is the Python convention for naming variables that don't ever change in value. So we call these constants and you can see here VS Code has picked up that this is a constant. Uh, but this is actually true for most languages as well. When you have variables that don't change in value, it's typically conveyed by spelling the entire variable name using capitals. But functionally, it's the same as if I spelt it with lowercase letters. It doesn't make any difference. So I'm just going to spell it with capitals just so that it goes with the convention. And now I can use it um, in any instance of this class. So now let's create another function that says get kilojoules. And because it's a method, it needs to have the self argument. But we don't need any other argument. We've got everything we need to work this out. And here, I'm going to return the self calories, and I'm going to multiply it with calories to kilojoules. But I can't just use it like this because it doesn't know where to find this. So I can either do that using self, or I could do that using the product class directly as well. And both of these should work. Um, but I prefer to do it using self. 
Now, if I want to get the kilojoule of a banana, I can do it like this. So let's go ahead and run that and see if it works. And now I get kilojoule of a banana is 439. Um, and I'm pretty sure I could just copy paste this and do this for the other products as well. So here we go. We've got different kilojoules for the different products. And uh, we don't have to store this kilojoule constant for each instance. We just store it once for the class. We've capitalized it to tell the reader that this is going to be a constant variable. And, um, and this is how we use it. Now, the last thing I want to show you is how to create a method that belongs to the class itself. So just like this constant here that is associated with the class, but not any particular instance, we can also do the same for the functions. Um, and we call those static functions. And this is handy when we want the class itself to be able to do something useful, but it doesn't require any input from a particular instance. So if we were really building a supermarket, we'd probably want each product to have some kind of unique ID that is random and maybe it doesn't have a duplicate with any of the other products. There's a really nice library in Python to help us do this and it's called UUID. So I'm going to import that first. And now I want to use this UUID to generate a product ID. So let's create something like this. So here I'm going to have a method called generate unique ID. But because this is not going to be an instance method, I don't need to put self in here anymore. And I want to have it return a new a string, which is going to be, uh, maybe I'll use product. And then I will use a UUID library to generate me a nice string. You don't have to remember this, but this is how I like to use it. You type UUID and then UUID v4. And that's the functions so you have to call it. And then you type hex to turn it into a string. Uh, don't worry about what this means now. It's not important, but just remember that if you ever need a universally unique ID that doesn't have any duplicates, you can use this. Um, okay, so now I have this, but how do I use it? Well, I can't use it like with the with a class like this. I mean, I could try and see what happens. Um, generate unique ID, and let's try and run it. And I get an error. It says it takes zero positional arguments, but one was given. It's because every time you call a method like this from a class, the class instance tries to shove itself into the argument. So it's actually sort of like putting itself in the first argument like that. Um, when I write something like this, what it's actually doing behind the scenes is really that. Um, so it's passing that uh, argument in. And when we get an argument that we're not expecting, Python doesn't like that. So that's why we have that error. So let's revert that. Well, it turns out to make a method like this completely universal for a class, we have to use something called a decorator in Python. You add it with the at sign and it's little things you can add to the beginning of a method or a function. Uh, and that does something special with it. So we're not going to go too deep into what decorators are either. But to turn this into a static method, we add a static method decorator. And this is built in, so you don't need to import anything to do this. So this will modify this method in a way that now we can use it without having to pass anything in. But we still probably shouldn't call it like this, because as I said, it doesn't belong to an instance of a class anymore. It belongs to the class itself. So we will call it with the class itself. So now let's print out the result of this and see if it works. And I'll hit run, and now I get my new product ID, which is product dash and then this completely random string here. And if I run this over and over again, you're going to see that it actually generates me a unique ID each time. So that works. And this is basically how you can create a universal method that belongs to the class, but not to any individual instance of the class. So you've just seen a specific example of how to use classes in Python to represent a food product. And there's actually so many other things you can do with it and so many more ways you can use classes to represent things about the world. Just to help you get a better sense of how classes can be useful, here are four other common examples where you might use classes. You could use them to represent a character in a game. Or if you have a shop, like a Shopify store or an Etsy store, you could use a class to represent each product. If you're building a virtual zoo, you could have the class represent an animal in the zoo. 
or if you're building an online bookstore or a library, you could use classes to represent each book. So this chapter has been a quick introduction about classes and how to use classes and how to create classes in Python. But it's actually a subject that goes much deeper than this. And if you're keen to learn more about how classes work, then I recommend you looking up something called object-oriented programming. This is a programming strategy that relies heavily around the use of classes. However, I think what you've learned here today is enough to get you going and start solving problems. Personally, myself, I tend to use a functional style of programming. It's a different strategy and, you know, there's debates on whether object-oriented or functional programming is better, but it's really up to preferences a lot of the time. And functional programming doesn't really rely on the use of classes a lot. So that's why I've kept this chapter relatively lightweight. But if you like classes and you want to make something like a game, then I think object-oriented programming is definitely worth a look into. Now let's wrap up this chapter with a short coding exercise to help you get some practice on using classes in Python. For this exercise, I want you to imagine that you're making a video game and you have different monsters that can fight. Um, and each monster will have different stats and abilities. To make this game, I want you to create a monster class in Python uh, that is able to have health points, attack points, and a method to fight another monster. And when one monster fights another monster, I want the defending monster to lose health equal to the attack points of the attacking monster. And here's a code snippet you could use as a starting point. Once you've filled out all these classes and modified the method so that they work, I recommend you actually creating a couple of instances of these monsters as well, and then getting them to fight each other to test out whether or not your class works as it should. So go ahead, pause the video now and give this exercise a shot. And once you're ready, resume the video to see my solution. So I hope you had a chance to give that exercise a shot because I think it's um, pretty fun. Uh, otherwise, here is the solution that I implemented. So we have the monster class and we have two methods, a constructor method and a fight method. And in the constructor method, I have it just take in the name, the hit points or health points and the attack. And you don't have to do a lot here in this constructor. All you have to do is just assign each of these input arguments into an instance variable. So self name, self HP and self attack. In the fight method, we take two arguments. So the first one always has to be self because this is an instance method. And the second one can be the other monster. I've called this target just so that we don't confuse it with um, this monster, the one that is doing the fighting. And in here, I'm going to do target HP minus equals to self attack. So I'm deducting the attacking monsters power from the targets health. And then I'm basically just printing out the results that this one attacked this one for this much damage. And then the target has this much health left after that attack. And to test the code, I've created two monsters, a centaur and a goblin with different health and attack points. And then I basically just get them to fight each other. So it's like an RPG game. Uh, and if I run that, you'll see that uh, the centaur attacks the goblin for 10 damage and the goblin has 40 HP left. And then the goblin attacks the centaur for 5 damage and then the centaur has 95 HP left. So that all seems to be working pretty well. And if you were able to do that, then I think that you are on your way to having a solid understanding of classes in Python. I hope you now know how to use classes in Python and understand how they can help you to organize your code and use them as blueprints for new objects that you want to create. See you in the next video where we're going to take everything we've learned in all the previous chapters and build our final project for this tutorial series which is going to be a personal expense tracking app.